Hey guys, Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming, coming at you with our newest Gears 5 Master Escape Guide. Today we're going to be running the Hive. We chose the Past Hive variant, even though they're the exact same map. Uh, we are going to be running with the following classes. I, Blades of God, am going to be running Gunner. We've got Pyro Sitterwatts, whose pers perspective you're going to be seeing, he's going to be running Tactician. And Mr. Beardsley is going to be running Anchor. These classes are good because the Gunner class has the Reflective Shell ability which can also do bleed damage. Tactician has Explosive Bleed and the Anchor has that handy Bulltalk Bleed. So looking at the modifiers for the Hives, um, or the Escape Map, the Hives uh, modifiers, we have more health, more lethal, regen penalty, faster venom, ammo starvation, regeneration, and Iron Man. The big ones you got to worry about here are regen penalty, which means our health regenerates 50% slower. Ammo starvation, which means our we get less ammo from any pickups in the map, which is also why the tactician will be very helpful. And regeneration, which means that enemies will regenerate their health over time. And this means that if we don't keep bleed damage on them or we don't continuously damage them, they will heal themselves up to full health again. And then there's some of the regular everyday uh, master difficulty ones like Iron Man and uh, more health and more lethal, but you should be used to dealing with those if you're trying to get all of these maps done on Master Difficulty. Alright, so let's actually dive into the map itself. As I said, you're going to be seeing the perspective of Pyro Sitterwatts, but I, Blades of God, am going to be giving the narration, so if it sounds confusing, I apologize. If I'm saying I'm doing something and you don't see it happening on screen, that's because I'm playing the character of Dizzy, um, and you're looking at the perspective of Lonnie, so... Once we come out of the spawn room, you're going to come straight ahead. There's only one path that you can take at the very, very beginning. Uh, and you're going to want to take it slow because you'll usually have rejects up here that you can try to execute. Uh, we kind of screwed up here and didn't execute this enemy. But the nice thing about this is that you can actually have your tactician mark all of these rejects and then execute them to help recharge your ultimates faster. Uh, that's very helpful with the gunner and his shell ability, his reflective shell. Uh, it's nice to have that ready to go when you get in a pinch. So go ahead and have your tactician mark all these rejects and then just take turns uh, executing the enemies. You can see the path we're going to take. We're going to go to the left. You could go around to the right, but we always take this path to the left. There is actually, if you'd taken another left, a ammo room that you could go. I believe there's an ammo room down to that little ramp that you can go to, but there's also some additional enemies down there, and we just chose not to mess with that, not to deal with it. So we bypassed it completely. So once you handle the first kind of area with the rejects in it, you're going to advance up here. You, My teammates uh, were a little overzealous with their shooting. We probably could have snuck up and gotten a couple of executions on these drones. Uh, and that is what I would recommend doing. Trying to sneak up and execute as many of the drones as you can. But if you're in this situation where either you start shooting early or they see you, just use your standard tactics. You know, take cover, uh, kind of pop out, do pot shots, make sure that your anchor is uh, trying to get those sh headshots on to get the bleed going and prevent that regen from taking effect. Um, and then the other thing you can do, because you don't have a lot of weapons at this point, is utilize that triple melee execution. And for those of you that don't know, what you're going to want to do if you're using a controller is push B to melee, or at least on the standard controller setup, push B to melee, B a second time, which will melee a second time and stun the enemy, and then press and hold B a third time and that will execute the enemy, or you could push X to take him as a meat shield after your second melee. Um, whatever the case is, it takes the enemy off the board and is a very, very vital part of the master escape um, experience. So once you get past those drones, what you're going to want to do is you're going to come down here and there's going to be a path to the left and a path to the right. On the left hand side, you're going to have two ammo rooms, uh, and on the right there's going to be one ammo room. So you've got a total of three ammo rooms that you can go into and sort of raid for equipment. Um, one of these ammo rooms does have a boom shot, so you're going to want to make sure your tactician picks that up with the explosive bleed, and there is uh, some frag grenades as well that you're going to want the tactician to pick up. Do be aware that there is a handful of juvies in this area who will kind of come at you, um, and I think they kind of spawn randomly. They're not always in the exact same spot, so the timing is a little bit different, but I think there's only three or four, so be aware of that. Don't get caught off guard. Um, the Venom hasn't really caught up to us yet. We're in pretty good shape, so we're taking our time and kind of strategizing as we go on who's going to take what weapons and who needs what for ammo. Uh, so you can definitely go faster than this. 
we're not trying to set any you know high scores or, or speed records so we're taking our time and just making sure that everyone is as topped off as they can be when it comes to ammo and grenades once you've finished raiding those safe rooms you can see we're still not even in the early venom so you've still got plenty of time you're going to come to this doorway it's the only pathway that you can take and you're going to kind of come down this hallway has a drop off and you're going to come into this very very large room uh, there are a lot of enemies here and there's several ways that you can go about tackling this depending upon which classes you take into the map with you um, some people like to because you can get a mark so some people like to run the marksman class or the nomad class um, and because you do eventually get shotguns in this room some people like to run the infiltrator uh, but the problem with running infiltrator is that up until this point you won't have a shotgun so you're kind of banking on the fact that you can pick up a shotgun and then start doing work before you get killed. Um, in addition to all of the drone type enemies that are in this room, you also have a Scion. I'm not sure if it's always an Ice Scion. We generally always saw an Ice Scion, but I think I remember a buzz kill and a drop shot uh, being in here too it, it, during different runs. So what you're going to want to do is we sit way back here under this cover or behind this cover uh, kind of let the enemies come to us. Beardsley's doing a great job using that bull talk to get bleed damage on. And you're going to see I run up right here and I activate my, again, me being Blades playing the Dizzy character. I run up with that reflective shield on and you can just see in the information feed how many enemies I downed with that reflective bleed damage. I kind of overextend myself a little bit and I got caught uh, way out in the open. Didn't think there was as many enemies left as there were. So I ended up getting downed but thankfully my teammates are there to pick me back up uh, pyro doing work with the hammer burst he's running tactician with like i said with that increased um, hammer burst damage so the hammer burst is fairly effective even on master difficulty without bleed um, but yeah you just kind of want to sit back pick off the enemies at a distance don't let them surround you that's the biggest thing in this room is do not get surrounded and once you take out all the drones and the scions do not advance um, i didn't call it out to my teammates fast enough that i was still scouting out different weapons and equipment and Beardsley ran for the safe room and the thing is once you run for the safe room you actually spawn in an additional wave of enemies that come from behind you and I end up getting downed you can see in our information feed I just got downed by a juvie so I told my uh, teammates just to go for the safe room and the nice thing is, is that after one of the updates I don't remember specifically which one but after one of the updates if you get killed in the first half of a map and your teammates make it to the safe room or the midway point you actually will respawn in that safe room with them, given you don't have any weapons, but you're still alive and in the fight. So that is, uh, now that the Coalition isn't updating gears anymore, that's permanent, that's here to stay. Um, so that's something that you can depend on, just like if you die in the second act, you can restart at the safe room, even if Iron Man is on. So made it a little simpler to get these done um, towards the end of the gears updates. Anyway. We did skip the safe room. Uh, there's plenty of, there's some ammo in there. Make sure you divvy up your ammo. We actually had uh, Pyro as our tactician drop his resupply card so that Beardsley could have uh, full ball talk for the start of the second act. And when we start the second act of this escape hive, you're going to come out of that room and up that ramp and you can get a couple of different spawns. You can either get, I believe it's Grenadiers and Scions or you can get Rifle Drones and Sires. We got the uh, Scion and Grenadier spawn, which actually isn't bad because it drops a Mulcher. And since I'm running the Gunner class, I have my increased Mulcher damage card on. Um, and that worked out really well. And after that initial part, you have a di couple different paths you could take. The path that we do is we go straight ahead and to the right. And you can go off to the left. It's a whole different path, a whole different strategy there. But this is the path that we found that we like the best. Um, you come into this room with that giant spinning, I don't know what it is, engine turbine, something like that. And there are a lot of snipers in here. Um, it's a lot of ranged combat. Beardsley's doing a great job trying to take out the, you know, as many enemies as he can using his bolt talk bleed. Um, and the thing you want to remember, or the thing you should know about this room, is that after you clear out most of these snipers and these enemies, and you advance to that door that Pyro's looking at right now, or you can see in the distance, you're going to have sort of a boss enemy spawn. Most of the time in our experience, it was a warden, um, but this run, we actually ended up getting a flock, and I guess there, there's not really a better or a worse spawn. I think the warden might be a little easier to deal with because it doesn't have as many or as wide of a variety of attacks, 
Um, but you, as you can see, we get the, the flock came in right here um, and we just kind of laid into it with Beardsley using his ball talk. I used what I had left for my mulcher um, and just worked on bleeding out that flock as quickly as we can. Pyro's still focusing on trying to take the snipers out so they're not going to be pestering Beardsley and I, uh, you can just see on the information feed in the bottom left, Beardsley just bled out that flock for us with his ball talk. So now we're just going to clean up the rest of these elite snipers. Um, again, utilize that triple melee you can see in the background there. I'm doing that, but unfortunately I got shock nated. Uh, but again, that triple melee is very, very important, especially against snipers because they don't have a rapid fire weapon. Um, so you can really close in on them and utilize this very well. The one thing you need to be careful of is that with the elite enemies, whether it's the elite drones or the elite snipers, is that they can actually just tank your melee and you could be two melees in and they'll just shrug it off and whack you and down you. Um, so do be careful of that. It can get really annoying, but it's just part of the game and we got to deal with it. So once the flock or the warden's dead and those enemies are dead, we're going to advance into this next room. The left and right path converge right here and you end up coming to two more ammo rooms. Um, again, there's a wide variety of grenades and ammo pouches in these two rooms, so divvy it up as you see fit. Um, we are already in the early Venom, so that's not necessarily a bad thing because Pyro, who is our tactician, is actually running the Venom resupply card or the explosive resupply card. So he's going to be able to top off his explosives while we're in the Venom, and we're going to do that before we advance to the next um, the next room. You can see we're just waiting here because it was just about, his ultimate was just about ready. So he popped his resupply. We're all sitting here loading up our weapons as best we can. And once this is done, uh, we are going to advance into the kind of the final room before we get to the helipad. So this is a fairly difficult room to get through. There's a lot of enemies. It's very wide open. You have scions to deal with. Um, and what we found to be the best method, instead of waiting in the doorway that you come in from, is to come up to the right here and kind of hold the high ground. You see Pyro's coming around that, again, He's this is the view that you're seeing is Pyro. He comes around to this right side and is going to try to use some grenades to take out a cluster of these drones. Um, he hits three of them, which is awesome. I come in with my shotgun to try to help clean them up a little bit. One of them came around behind us, uh, didn't get the drop on us, it was just an Imago, so not a lot of health um, and no down but not out status, which is nice. And now you can see here come our Scions. I run up with the reflective shell, pick up that uh, mulcher, and we just sort of go to work between Beardsley's Boltock bleed, my reflective bleed, and uh, the mulcher. We just go to work cleaning up these enemies as quick as we can. So as you can see, we have a ton of juvies that end up coming at us here right towards the end. The doors had already started to close on us, so what you saw there was actually the rush, the end rush of enemies. Pyro hit a great boom shot to take out a bunch of them, and then Beardsley threw a flame nade to clean up a lot more. Um, and that's it. You can actually wait up there until the door's about to close, and then book it around the corner, and you're in the clear, guys. But that's the hive. The If you don't run the past hive variant, just the regular hive, the enemies in the map is exactly the same, so this does apply. Um, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck, and until next time, bye bye Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day everyone.